The video you're about to watch is from one of our spirit schools. God Ministries presents it, preached by Gustave Leroux. Um, you will greatly be propelled by this message. You will be blessed in every way. I would urge you to subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you. Bless you. Father, we just glorify your name. <clears throat> Thank you that we can be inside of you right now. Thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for the frequency that we receive from you, Lord. And the frequency that comes from the heavens that we release into the earth. That brings the alignment uh, that's, that's made for the earth. Thank you for the power and the authority and the dominion. The revelation, understanding and intimacy that we have with you, Father. Thank you that you're beginning to teach your people who we are. You're beginning to open up the doors for us to begin to walk in the fullness of what you've made available. And Lord, I see the change. We see how your sons and your daughters are beginning to align. We see how things are beginning to shift and come back into place. Lord, we, we have seen a great change in the nation. And we believe that there's an even greater change coming. Because the ecclesia, the church, the, the body of Christ beginning to walk in intimacy, beginning to walk in the true revelation of being in you, being uh, sealed and locked in the fullness of your glory living in the kingdom of heaven and legislating that into the earth becoming oracles knowing the value of being a king and a, and a lord understanding that we are sons and daughters of the most high walking in the fruit full priesthood and understanding the order of melchizedek knowing the age that we in is a new age it's the age of zion having the understanding that we have the ability as legislators in the kingdom of heaven to bring that kingdom into the earth and to to know how to do it to slay the dragons and the giants and to take back our mountains just like caleb did just like joshua did to understand this generation is a people that will say yes and that will run with the fullness of the glory that's covering us father we love you we praise you we worship glorify magnify you we thank you for who you are my king Tonight, I just pray that your glory will, will fill us up with revelation and insight, Father. It will take us deep to a place in the heavens where we've never been. It will open up our hearts to receive everything, even the new things, the things we don't understand, things we can't perceive. But I do pray, Lord, we'll break ourselves out of the box and we'll begin to step into what you have. We love you, my King. Glorify, worship, exalt you. Above everything and everyone else, my Lord, you are our Lord, Jesus Christ, our King. The foundation has been laid. Now we're building on the foundation, Father. We're building on a foundation of revelation, insight from your kingdom. And we glorify and magnify you for it. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen. How are you guys doing? Interesting evening, very interesting. Nonetheless, I'm excited about what we're doing. We're busy with a series called Yes, Lord. Father, would you mind switching the light on, please? We're busy with a series called uh, the Yes, the Yes, Lord generation, um, which is it's really partially the Joshua generation, but I don't believe that this is quite the Joshua generation. It's a generation that goes a little bit deeper, a little bit higher, a little bit wider, one of space more intimate, it has more power, and operate out of a, the kingdom of heaven. Joshua was a, uh, if you know the story, was a phenomenal leader. He was more than what Moses ever was, yet in the same breath, everything he knew, he received from Moses. And of course, when he went into the mountain with Moses, he spent a longer time there. It was more intimate with the Father. It was all based on his relationship. And the fact that there were 12 spies and two came back with a positive understanding, a positive view regarding the giants is the yes, Lord type of people that he's calling us to be. Okay, Josh generation, this yes generation will be men and women of faith who speaks and live by the word of God. Now I need you to understand the word of God in its fullness. Uh, when, when, when the Bible talks about the Word of God, they are not talking about the Bible. 
Now, we don't, we don't always remind ourselves of this, but there was no Bible when the Bible was written. <laughs> right? That's just logic. So when he talks about the Word, he talks about the fullness of Yeshua. It, it wants us to understand the different dimensions of the Word. So we are going to be living by the Word. We're not going to uh, live by reading the Bible only. Because reading and studying and meditating the Word of God, the Bible, is not going to get us to know Yeshua. It's not, us, it's not going to get this generation to step into that intimate place where we literally know and understand Yeshua, where we literally understand Yahweh and walk in the fullness of the glory that He wants to put into us. It comes from living, moving, having your being inside of Christ in the kingdom of heaven, and then, of course, legislating that into the earth. Amen. Are you guys okay? And so knowing and understanding that when he says live by faith, um, Galatians 2.20 tells us that we, we no longer live and operate out of our own faith. We operate out of the faith of Yeshua. Now his faith is different because his faith is placed in the fullness of Yahweh. Because he's part of the Godhead. And because the Godhead has a man in it, and I, I remind you guys that it's the four faces. It is the ox, the eagle, the lion, the man. Man, has, God has made a space for us inside of him once again. Because the, the idea of the Hebrew culture is that everything that was in the beginning has to go full circle back to the beginning. So whatever was created, whatever was spoken, whatever came out, the idea of it is for it to go back in. Okay? Am I, am I losing you guys? Just the understanding the Father wants us to have is that inside of Christ, Inside of the faith that I have because of the light that covers me once again, I walk in a dimension of purity, holiness. I walk in a dimension of faith that I cannot have in the natural. That's why I need to understand that I'm a spirit being. I need to understand that He has opened up the heavens for me through the torn veil, through the blood that was shed on the cross, so that I can step back into Him. It takes me back to the day that we ate of the fruit. How many of you can remember that day? It was a miserable day, right? We ate of the fruit and immediately we lost something. We lost our covering. Because the Bible tells us that if you eat of this fruit, you will surely die. As soon as they ate of the fruit, they realized that they were naked. So they lost something that covered them. They lost the light, which is the word, which is Yeshua. And so once we get born again, we step back into the light and we begin to operate from out of the kingdom of heaven. Because now my spirit is born again, it's born from above and I have the ability through being a spirit man, because that's the original created me, is a spirit being. And all of a sudden I begin to have the ability again to live out of the heavens, to live in the fullness of Christ and to operate out of His faith. So this generation will be a people that will not be bound by the gifts. Now I know that we get all freaked out when someone talks about it like that because we love the gifts and the gifts is all we know. And so we come and we, we come to see someone that has the gifts. Matter of fact, we put our entire church um, experience in the hands of someone with a gift. I know this is the truth because this is what we do. It's like going to the zoo to watch the animals in the cage. Now, unfortunately, it sounds terrible, but that's what we do. Yeah. That's why most of us go to church. That's why we go to meetings, because we want to see the one with the power for the hour. <clears throat> and I believe the Father wants us to get out of that mentality. He wants us to understand that Yeshua uh, operated out of a different dimension of faith. The gifts were a measure. The Holy Spirit came as a measure. And so as we go deeper in revelation regarding who we are, we don't need the gifts because we begin to walk into the kingdom of heaven and operate out of the spirit realm where all things are visible, all things are seen. Where I don't have to have the gift of knowledge, I operate out of the knowledge of the Father, the fullness of that knowledge because I've walked with the seven spirits. Now I will say this again, I've said it a million times, the seven spirits is not seven attributes of Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that the seven spirits is at the throne. How many of you know that, that the Holy Spirit, the Father, and Yeshua is on the throne, not by the throne? So the seven spirits is the Father's desire for us to walk intimately with them so that we can begin to understand our position in Christ. And this generation, out of the, the understanding of the faith that we walk with, the faith that we will be in, will bring us to that place of absolute freedom in knowing who we are and the power that He has given us to walk in. 
Um, I need you to understand, although the church still has an age that they bound in, and I say this and I need you to understand it, we have a church age and we have a kingdom age. Amen. Now the kingdom age has come into place uh, many years ago already, but it's very difficult for the church age to step out of what they know. Because there was a lot of manipulation. There's a lot of, well, you do what I tell you to do, or you're in rebellion. And if you're in any form of rebellion, it's witchcraft. And that was our understanding. So it was very difficult to move on to the next phase. And of course, the same thing applies when I am at the pinnacle of my faith, when I'm at the pinnacle of where I'm at, at the level that the Father wants me to be. It's difficult to go to the next level. Because I mean, you know, at the next level, there's all new stuff. As a matter of fact, I look at my sons to play games and some of the new levels they go into, uh, the older level uh, really help them nothing. There's no, there's no value to the previous level because the new level is just completely different. Wow. And the age of the kingdom is like that. It's completely different. Now it's like going from normal maths from, from what is grade 6, 7, 8 and then when you get to grade 9, 10, 11 you go to algebra. It's still math, but it's like a whole different ball game. Now the church age told you that you have to go to church on Sunday. If there's two services, you go to both. Uh, if there's a Wednesday, Wednesday service, you go to the Wednesday service. You have to pray um, before you go to bed, and you have to pray before you go uh, when you wake up in the morning. And you have to read your Bible, and you have to study and know scriptures. It tells you that you have a do-do list, and you have to do it. It doesn't give you the confidence in saying that you will definitely go to heaven because you know Yeshua, it tells you that there's certain things you have to do so that you can qualify to go into the heavens. Right? Now, and of course it tells us that when you die, you'll be perfect. But the kingdom age is a whole different ballgame. It's a dimension where I step into the blood of Yeshua. I step into the fullness of Yeshua and I begin to live in the heavens today. Now, this is the generation that we're going to be. And I believe that we are already. I mean, I've been doing the spirit school for three years in, in America. And there's other schools all over the world doing and teaching the same thing. So there's sons and daughters all over the earth stepping into this kingdom. And this kingdom uh, age that the Father has opened up for us. So that we can begin to see in the spirit at a greater level. Amen. Hallelujah. How are you guys doing? Okay. Then Caleb quiet the people before Moses and said, um, we, should all, we should by all means go up and take possession of it, for we will surely overcome. Now I remind you that um, everybody saw the same thing. But it was only Joshua and Caleb that came back and said, well these giants are nothing. They have big fruit, massive apples, it's great, it's perfect. They have a fruitful land, I want it. But the other guys came back and said, no, 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 we are like grasshoppers in their sight. They're going to squash us. And this generation will have great dimensions of faith. Because we will be seeing and looking at things through the eyes of Yeshua. Exciting, isn't it? I remind you that there will, pl there will be plenty of opposition to come. You know, one of the prophecies I got from a, a very spiritual, very intense person before I left South Africa to come to America was a very... Very interesting, very powerful prophecy, but I remember one of the things she said is I would go against the grain. When everybody is coming back down, I'm going to be the one going up. Where they started, where they stopped, I'm going to go even higher. And I was an eagle soaring higher and going past all the other eagles coming back. There was the places I was going into that people looked at and said, why would you want to go in there? Are you out of your mind? It's not right. You shouldn't be there. You shouldn't talk about those things. So I know that I'm in the exact spot, exactly where I need to be. Not just because I think I should be, because I've seen my scroll, I've read it, and I know exactly where I need to be. It's in the right place. But the Father wants you to understand. Um, in his ministry, Yeshua, he had the 5,000 men. Now, when there's 5,000 men, how many of you understand there's going to be at least 15,000 women? Now, look at me with that tone. That's true. <laughs> okay? And so... Then he had the 82, that was the 70 that he sent, and the 12, his personal disciples. That's 82. And he taught them at a different level than what he did the 5,000. Then he would take the 12 separately and minister to them at a different level, more intimate, give them the meat. But then there was the three that always followed him. There was the three that never left his sight. And they would get the mystery. 
Now the age of the kingdom is also the age of the mystery. It's the age of intense revelation that we get from the kingdom of heaven. Now I want to remind you guys that in my studies, and I did 13 years of theology. That's a bachelor's degree, an associate's master's degree, and two Bible, three Bible schools. That's a lot of studying the word. None of the stuff that I'm teaching today was ever taught to me in any of these Bible schools. Why? I don't understand. The way that the Father is bringing a revelation to me now is so different from man teaching me. They are having the ability to go into the kingdom of heaven, walk with one of the seven spirits, be personally trained and equipped by the seven spirits. That is the age that we're in. Being able to see in the spirit all day at any time I engage it. Three, six years ago, I could never see an angelic being. Now I see them all the time. As soon as I engage, there's angels. In my house, it's full of angels. When I came into this building this, 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 this evening, there was an angelic being stood up, came through the door, walked up there, and he stood right there, and he's still standing right there. And there's multiple angels sitting even in this room as I'm speaking. But I would never be able to see it because my eyes were shut. Because this generation is going to be able to see. Matter of fact, this generation will see better in the, in the spirit than what they would see in the natural. Isn't that exciting? Yeah, hallelujah. Yeah. Of course, most of this opposition will be the religious institutions. Because I'm going to understand the Antichrist is not someone that's against Jesus. I mean, that's just logic. The Antichrist is someone that's against the anointing. And it's not someone that's against miracles, signs, and wonders. It's someone that's against uh, being completely consumed and covered by Yeshua. Because in this age, if you're not covered by your pastor or covered by a ministry, you're in rebellion. So what we're saying in reality is that I understand my leadership and I can never go higher than what they are. I can never do more than what they are. They can do. But in reality, he says, I am your covering. I am your head. Amen. If he's my head, no man can be my head. I can be in fellowship. And I can walk intimately with those around me because that's the idea. Submit one to another. I have an apostle in my life. I have a spiritual father in my life. But I don't submit to them in the sense that they have authority over me. They don't cover me, although I have uh, um, intimate relationships with them. If I'm in error, they would come and speak to me about it. Because that's the relationship that we have, submit one to another. But I'm not under a ministry. I've been in one church for 24 years. One church. I'm still in that same church, although it's in South Africa and I'm in America. They still sent me texts. From South Africa, they sent texts to my phone every week, um, telling me of events and how much they love, how much they care for us. Because they ordained us and they sent us. But they're not my covering. The Father wants us to understand that this is a time and a, and, a, and a generation that will understand the covering of Yahweh being placed in Him. The understanding of the fire and the baptism of the fullness of being inside of Him. Because Jesus never cast demons out in the name of Jesus. So, that's weird. He was my example. I'm supposed to do what He did. I'm supposed to say what He said. Because he was the one that came so that I could be like him. But he never cast demons out in the name of Jesus. So how did he do it? He was placed inside the name. It's the position that he carried that gave him authority. And we need to understand this generation will know the position we have in him. In the fullness of Christ. And what that brings me to. How that propels me into the life that he's destined for me to live in the earth. Because it's legislation that takes me to the next level. And legislation is always bringing the kingdom of heaven into the earth. How are, you guys, how are you guys doing? This yes generation, this generation that will say yes to its full extent. Now I want to remind you, there's many rooms in my father's house. There's many rooms in the kingdom of heaven. And there's many dimensions that you can go into. One of the rooms that I've been into that blew my mind was the treasury room. I guess that's what you would call it. I don't know. That's what I'm calling it. But it would be a room of revelation that was sent into the earth that was rejected. So the previous generations, the leaders had rejected these revelations 
these insights, these new, new levels of, of uh, revelation the Father sends into the earth and it, sends, it gets sent back. And I said that before, this generation is receiving everything in that room. There's dimensions of glory coming in. If you read the book of Enoch, if you read the book of Revelations, you begin to understand that that was what was spoken then was for now. Amen. What was given then is for now. The Joshua generation will be sensitive to the real grief over sin. See, this is the Father's heart. He wants you to be reminded constantly that this is no longer what the church is all about. We do not focus on sin. Uh, it's not a hyper grace message, but my focus cannot be on sin because what your eye hooks into multiplies. So if I'm constantly focused on my sin, if someone's constantly telling me how bad I am, how much sin I have in my life, how terrible my life is because of things I do, and this is why you're going through all the trouble, this is why you have financial lack, this is why this is happening, this is why that's happening, and you think, well, it's because of sin, sin, sin. So my focus is sin. I don't even understand. You're going to be want to sin more. But this generation is not going to be focused on sin. We're going to be a generation that is focused on the cross. Focus on Yeshua crucified. Focus on the fullness of His glory and constantly in worship. But not worship like we used to do it. Not waiting for His presence in a meeting. Going into the kingdom of heaven and soaking ourselves in His presence. Where we can see Him face to face. Touch Him. Now I've been walking in this for six years. I've been in heaven multiple, multiple times. I have sometimes even asked the Father if I could bring something back into my today. If I can tell you, because it's so real. And the more and the deeper you go into the kingdom of heaven, the more you spend time with the seven spirits, the more you spend time at its throne, the more real it becomes. The more time you spend in Eden and you eat of the fruit and you begin to soak on the things that's there, and the Father begins to show and reveal to you things, and it becomes so real. I sometimes want to bring some things back. He's told me many times, I don't want you to. Because it, it has to happen by faith. It, it, the people need to understand that I don't go into heaven because I'm special. And, and, and Ian Clayton doesn't go in because he's special. Justin Abraham, we don't go in because we're special. And the hundreds and thousands of other men and women that's doing it daily, we don't go in because we're special. It's because of the blood. It's because of the veil that's torn. There's no longer anything that prevents us from going to the heavens. We've been completely restored. He says in his word that we are like him. We are to be glorified in our body, soul, and spirit. We are to walk in a dimension and realm that the earth has never seen. It is the image that Moses had bared when he came down the mountain. Uh, ox, eagle, lion, man. Uh, Horn-like appearances coming out of his face. Lightning, fire. Fire to such an extent that he could smash the golden cow into powder. That's burning at 5,000 Fahrenheit. 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That's intense heat. That's what he looked like. That's what he walked down from the mountain like, or looking like. Only 80 days in his presence. 80 days in his presence, that's what they could physically see. Oh, they, were, they were afraid of him. They were blown away by him. He opened his mouth and they were in awe of what they saw. And the Bible tells us that, that we have the exact same thing, yet we won't fade. Our glory won't fade. <clears throat> but we have to believe it. I don't even understand. If you don't believe it, you can't receive it. His desire for us to begin to understand that all that He has made available for us is in the kingdom of heaven. Everything you need, everything you want is right there. How are you guys doing? The Joshua generation will have and operate in a militant spirit and will fully follow the Lord. By my servant Caleb, <clears throat> but my servant Caleb, because he has a different spirit and has followed me fully. See, the Father wants us to understand. Now, I remind you, if you read the Old Testament, especially the Gospels, when, when, uh, no, not the Gospels, when, when, when Paul writes books to the, to the saints, he would say things like, I salute you. 
But if you read the, New, the old King James, it says, I salute you. And some of the other books would say, I greet you. But they were so militant in those days that they would literally salute each other. It was a militant rule, a militant dimension of structure and uh, belief and being driven by the Spirit of God to do things in an orderly yet powerful militant way. There was no compromise. I mean, come on, they sold everything they owned, brought it to the church and divided it equally. How many of you know that we cannot do that? We cannot, we cannot even greet each other with holy kisses. Right? No, we can't even think of that. Because we don't have such a thing as the holy kiss. Or is it just the circles I hang around with? <laughs> How are you guys doing? See, his desire for us at this point is to understand that a generation that's about to step into the fullness of what he has made available is going to light up the earth. Because I, I've said this many times, but the blood restored me. The blood restored you. The blood did not restore the earth. We have to restore the earth. But I cannot restore the earth if I still think I'm a mere sinner. I can't restore the earth. I can't do what I need to do if I've never been in the kingdom of heaven. If I still believe that death is my savior, that I have to die to go to heaven, I have to die before I'm perfect. See, he says in his word that be perfect for I'm perfect. Then he looks at us and he says, well, I look at you through the blood of my son and I see you as perfect. I see you as holy, set apart. I see you as peculiar people, a generation, a leadership, a man, a woman that is completely driven by my fullness. That's what he looks at us. That's what he sees when he looks at us. That's not what we see. That's not what they taught us. And so we can never legislate the kingdom of heaven into the earth unless we begin to believe that we are more than what they told us we are. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> see, his desire for this time and season is for us as people to begin to understand that there's no obligation for me to pray for hours every day. There's no obligation in any way, fashion, or form for me to read the Bible all day long. Okay, there's no such an obligation whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I can do whatever I want to. There's no obligation in any way, fashion, or form. Because any form of obligation that I have means that he's applying pressure to me and telling me what I have to do. He's commanding me to do things. And that's what we've done in the Ecclesia. We've made everything he said out of the love of his heart to us as a commandment. Even the Ten Commandments. And if you understand the Hebrew culture, it was never Ten Commandments. We, that's what we made of it. It was a love contract. It was a marriage contract given to the Israelites from the heart of Yahweh to say, this is my contract to you. Will you marry me? When I, when I say marriage, I'm not saying that he asked them to be the, my bride. Be my bride. He said, I want to step into covenant with you, that of a marriage. That, that type of intimacy is what I long for. Please, don't have any other gods before you. Respect each other. Love each other. Don't murder. Don't steal. Don't cover. See, it's a love covenant. It's a, it's a love contract. And his desire for us, for us has always been to then say, well, okay, this is what I want out of this marriage. This is what I want out of this covenant. But all we hear is, is a commandment, and he's commanding me to do this, and I have to do it. That's why there's so much rebellion in the church. Because it's in my nature to rebel. But if I begin to understand that that's not how he works, that's not what he's trying to do. He's not commanding nobody anything because that's not the heart of the Father. The heart of the Father is to literally just begin to show us where to go. He wants you to understand that it's all about desire. He wants to have you walk with the spirit of the fear of the Lord so you can begin to know how much and how awesome the Father is, how beautiful, how majestic He is. When you see Him for the first time face to face, and you begin to understand in your natural capacity, wow, what I've heard of Him, what I've read of Him, cannot compare to what I'm seeing right now. The dimension and waves of glory that comes out of Him, eternity that's in Him, that looks at me, the beauty that, oper that, that happens when I step into Him, the kingdoms that opens up when I'm in Him, the fact that there's creation in Him, there's living letters, there's a whole other kingdom, there's gates, there's doors, there's things in the Father that I can't even express or explain because it's not in the earth. 
My, my spirit doesn't even have a word for it because my soul won't perceive what I see. Then worship becomes a whole different place. Then all of a sudden, I want to listen to all that he has to say. I want to live a life that is pure. I want to be set apart to a whole different level. I, I want to begin to have everybody look at me and see, listen, I'm not just a son of God. I'm not just a child of God. I am the full image of Yeshua. <laughs> it is different than just waking up in the morning, praying a prayer. The prayer that he longs for is a 24-7 engagement into him. When I step into my car, I'm not really stepping into my car. That's just a, a doorway for me to step into the kingdom. Because it's a trigger. I open my door and immediately that trigger. I'm opening a door. I'm going in. I'm stepping into the Father. I'm stepping into the kingdom. I'm stepping into new revelation and insight. When I start driving, I'm going forward. I'm going forward deeper into Yahweh. I'm going forward and deeper into what the Father has for me today. Everything is a trigger. And the Father wants us to understand. It's not about closing the door and being alone and putting my hands together and on my knees and praying my needs and my, my sins to be forgiven. It's about constant, in, uh, constant communication, going deeper into Him and beginning to understand who He is. Then we, we, we kind of begin to fight these revelations that, that we've been taught. The Father does not want us to marry Him. <laughs> and I said that many times this week, and it freaks half the church out, but it confuses the world. We make it so illogic. But if I know Him, I understand that He's representing the intimacy that He longs for with us with a bride. He's not wanting you to marry Him. I can't look at what He says in the Word and say, This is your Father, Abba. Yeshua is then my brother because my father, Abba, is his father, Yeshua. So Jesus' father is my father and Jesus then that makes him my, my older brother. This is just the logic that we understand in the word as we study it. But then in the same breath, we want to say, well, the Bible talks about a bride, so we must be the bride, so I'm going to marry Jesus. So I'm going to marry my older brother, yet the Bible is against insects, not insects. Right? Some of the kings is against insects like Faru. But that's not what he's saying. It's against insects. Yet in the same breath, the Bible tells us that he, we are the body. So we're saying that Jesus is going to marry his body. <laughs> now, I don't want to get into detail when it comes to this type of stuff, but I want you to know. The Father wants you to know the intimate covenant that he wants with you. It's more than a blood covenant. It's deeper than marriage. But the deepest, the deepest revelation we have of that type of covenant that he wants is marriage. So every time he talks about the bride, every time he talks about covenant or marriage, uh, he's representing an intimate level that he's longing for, for us, the ecclesia. For us to go deep into him. Like if I'm intimate with my wife, if we, um, we, we're married, we become one. It's, a, it's an intimacy that I can't express to anyone else. If I do, it's called adultery. It's an intimacy between husband and wife. It's deep. It's deep intimacy. And that it cannot even be represented to what the Father wants with me. Because they say that me and my wife are one. But I am here and she's there. So in the spirit maybe we're one, but I can't see that and I can't show you that. And physically we're not one. But yet we, we, we operate as one because she's got my last name. But in the spirit, when I become one with Yeshua, it's a whole different ballgame. Because I physically go into him and become one with him. Yeah. And I said this on, my, on Tuesday. Everything slides into him. My, my bone becomes his bone. My blood becomes his blood. His bone becomes my bone. His blood becomes my blood. I sink into him. His eyes becomes my eyes. My eyes becomes his. I begin to see through his eyes. And he begins to see through my eyes. Everything changes. It's in him. And then of course he's one with the father. If I'm one with him and he's one with the father. I'm one with the father. If he's one with the, with the Holy Spirit, and I'm one with Yeshua, then I'm one with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is one with the Father. We are one together inside of each other. It's a dimension of intimacy that naturally can't be grasped. That's why the Spirit makes it clear, but my soul has to be uh, aligned to receive it. And this generation is going to walk in this, walk in this revelation. Amen. Fully, fully following deep intimacy is what the Father calls us to. The 
Joshua generation or the yes generation will be men and women of the Spirit. So the Lord said to Moses, Take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom is the Spirit. Now I need you to understand this, and I'm gonna, I want to make this as clear as possible. I used to be a human being. I say this millions and millions of times, and I don't know why we don't always believe this, but when, when the Father created me, His plan was already finished. Because He doesn't start anything He doesn't finish first. That's the way He operates. That's why the Bible tells us that uh, Yeshua was slain before the foundations of the earth. Right? The Lamb was slain before the foundations of the earth. So when Yeshua created man, and He said, let us make man in our image, um, and give him dominion over the earth, I was already set out to have a certain image because I'm created in his image. But let me remind you, because of sin, the image was distorted and broken. So I'm restored now, but my physical body, this is not the image that he was talking about. This is the housing of my spirit today. And it's also not his will. It's also not the way it's supposed to be. But although I'm restored, but it's a process. Restoration is instant, but believing the restoration is a process. So although I am born again, born from above, my spirit is united with God in its fullness and now has the ability to begin to pour into my soul so my soul can con consume itself in the growth uh, according to what my spirit pours into it. As it engages with the Holy Spirit, my, 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 my body begins to change daily because I eat of Him and drink of Him. That's what the Bible talks about when it says, um, be in remembrance of me as we eat of me, drink of me as the beginning of eternal life. Because the DNA of my physical body changes. Why? Why? Because when I eat of the bread and I drink of the wine, I begin to understand what my spirit's doing in the spirit. It's not physically eating Yeshua because we're not cannibals, right? It's not physically drinking blood because we're not into vampirism. It is understanding that my soul knows that when I drink wine or when I drink juice, Everything that goes into my body gets digested and gets sent into every part of my body because it goes into my blood. My blood reaches every part of my being except my nay, no, except my, my eyebrows, my beard, hair, and my hair on top. That's why I shaved my head. Because I want it to go everywhere. I'm just joking. But I need to understand. That's why I eat or drink of the wine so my, my soul can understand it. I eat the bread so that my, my body can understand when, it, when I take in the body of Christ, it goes into my being and it then goes into my digestive system and into my blood and every part of him goes into all of who I am. It's that dimension of becoming one, it's that changing of my DNA that literally reverses that which the sun and the moon has brought to me. And I'm going to understand that's death. Because the sun and the moon added days to our lives. Yet, according to scientists, if you live according to, if you live, uh, if you operate at the speed of light, then there's no time and space. And we forget for some reason that we live in Christ. And Christ is the light. He's the fullness of light. Matter of fact, He's not created light, He's the creative light. It's a different dimension of light. It's not the sun or the moon. It's a light that we live in and operate in. So it's at the speed of light that we live. And at the speed of light, there's no time and space. So his desire for us as eternal beings is to live out of the time and space that we're in right now and to operate in him. Because in him, there's only life and the fullness of life. That's how we get rid of sickness and disease. Well, you can still go according to the age of church and come to the elders and let them pray for you. There's no, nothing wrong with that. But there's a better way. And the better way is just don't get sick. The better way is just operate from out of his throne and realize because if my soul begins to understand what my spirit sees every day, then I won't get sick because where my spirit lives, there's no sickness, there's no disease, there's no death, there's no irritation or frustration, there's no anger, there's no hate, there's no murder, there's just love and the fullness of it. There's just life and the fullness of that life. That's why my spirit engaging with Yahweh is constantly pouring that into my soul so I can begin to understand where I need to come from, where I came from, where I need to live. Because then I won't have to have these physical issues in my body. And if you do fall and you do hurt yourself, or if you do get sick, there is always your brothers, men and women of God, to pray and lay hands on you. But that is the second option, not the first option. Are you guys okay? 
Being man or woman of the spirit is understanding the fact that I'm a spirit being. And like Jesus, and I say like Jesus because we miss all these scriptures, but Jesus did not house his body. Or his body wasn't his housing. If you read the scriptures and you meditate on the life of Yeshua and the four gospels, you should begin to understand that his spirit was his housing. His spirit was his host. So the temple was not his body. His temple was his spirit. And that's his desire for us. Although my spirit and my soul at this moment live in my body, the original me, the original created me in the, in the Garden of Eden or in, in the paradise, my spirit was on the outside and my soul and my body was on the inside. So when I operate through the restoration of the blood of Yeshua in the earth, like Jesus walking the earth, he get, wants to get stoned. Now, I'm not saying he wants to go get stoned. The, 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 the Jews wanted to stone him. They were angry, they were frustrated, he said something stupid. They actually want to push him off the cliff. That's one of the stories. And then the Bible tells us that he, he just walked through them. Now, I have said this a million times, but <clears throat> our natural understanding, our Greek way of thinking is, wow, they made a path for him. But let me explain to you, you know, because an angry Jew is not going to make a path for you unless it's literally a miracle and your glory and power pushes them aside. Um, but what happened there is that he walked through them. He physically walked through them and it freaked them out so much that when he came back, there was revival. Now you can go read that scripture again with that mindset and you'll begin to see it. But the same thing happened. He's in the synagogue. Now I remind you that he was a Jew. So Jews don't go to temples. Jews go to synagogues. Amen. And he was a rabbi. He was not just some weird guy that came to the shore and screamed at some fishermen and said, Hey, you, come follow me. And they like left everything and ran after him. Now he was a full-on rabbi that was looking for disciples. And so when he had his 12 disciples and he started going into the synagogues, he, uh, the, the Pharisees hated his yoke because his yoke was different to theirs. The yoke is the teaching of the rabbi. Now, if you were a rabbi with authority, you could uh, teach whatever, you could teach your own yoke your own philosophy, your own revelation of what was taught to you. If you're not a rabbi with authority, you can only teach the yoke of your rabbi. So Jesus is standing in the synagogue, and again they want to stone him. And the Bible says, and he hid himself in the temple. Now, he was not in the temple, he was in a synagogue, one. Um, if you know what a synagogue looked like, it was just a tent. There is literally no place to hide. And Jesus being a fully grown man, I don't think that he could hide behind a pole or behind anything. Because the Bible then goes further and tells us that they walked right by him and could by no, no means see him. So he was invisible. Now we try and look over that with our Greek mindset, but the Hebraic understanding of this is that he shifted into his spirit and they could no longer see him. And so, as, as a, rebel, a, a generation of men and women in the spirit, his desire for us is to understand the ability that we have. That we can begin to shift into our spirit being and live in that realm. See, if I am reminded constantly, and I am, to overshadow my soul and my body with my spirit, to have my spirit on the outside of my body, and I do this every day of my life, and I've seen the change in my physical body. They said there's a dimension of his kingdom that surrounds me that uh, uh, changes everything. I, for example, I slip from climbing from a, a yacht onto the deck, uh, bare feet. Not the best idea, but as I put my foot down, I do a full split, which I can't do. And I bash my leg into the side of the deck, and immediately the front of my shin makes a bump the size of a full egg. And of course... I want to cry, and I, the fact that I didn't swear, scream, and shout, it was phenomenal. There was no one there. I could have done it, but I just, I didn't. I just, I just went into the spirit, and calmed myself down, came out, and I said to my wife, I said, baby, I don't know if this is okay, but this looks freaky. She freaked out because it looked really bad, but the very next day, that's less than 24 hours later because I just went to bed. And, and, and while I went to, to, to do a school, came back, climbed to bed, slept, woke up the next morning, and the bump was gone. There's still some bruising, and it's still a little bit sore, but the bump was gone. There's a, a dimension of healing that takes place 
in a body that's covered by a spirit that is rapid and supernatural. Amen. You know, I remember my wife here a couple of years ago, she would get a bump or a bruise and it would stay there for months. She would get a cut and it would heal over two or three months. I remember bumping my head on the, on the counter, on the corner counter, and it made a scar, or it had a, 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 a scab there, and within two days, the scab comes off. But Claire would just take forever to heal. Now, all of a sudden, that we're walking in this revelation, and her, shadow, her spirit overshadows her body and her soul, her healing is as fast as mine. Because there's a change that takes place when you live in the spirit. Now, when I, I know our understanding of living in the spirit is different, but my, 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 my spirit is seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So when I live in the spirit, when I have my soul and my body overshadowed by my soul and my, my spirit, which is in Christ, there's a dimension of healing that flows through me all the time. I do the same with my kids. I overshadow them with my spirit daily. Now, I want to tell you, we've been in America for three years, and my, my, my daughter and my two older sons have not been sick once. In three years. That's incredible. The younger one, I overshadow him as often as I can, but I think it's because he's got a medical aid. Because he's got a medical aid, he gets sick every now and then, but again, in the same breath, they go to, to um, aftercare, they go to all these places where all these kids are, and my kids hardly ever get sick. Because I'm overshadowing them with my spirit, and my spirit in Christ in the heavenly places. Amen. You guys okay? Amen. This generation will be chosen, anointed, and commissioned by God for the task. See, this is a generation that will go into the heavens and receive their full destiny scroll. A people that will know exactly what to do according to what you're destined for the life you live today. If you want peace of faffling around doing things what other people are telling you to do, you'll be doing exactly what the Lord's told you to do. Now let me tell you something. Six years ago, uh, I could not even think of a spirit school. As a matter of fact, uh, three and a half years ago, this wasn't even a ministry I thought existed. So when I read my spirit stuff, my, my, my destiny scroll, all of a sudden, this just popped up. And immediately, this door started opening because the Father showed me who I'm going to become and where I'm going to go. As a matter of fact, I have seen in my future 12 years in advance. So for the next... Well, the next nine years, I know exactly what I need to do. And then the next part of my scroll will be revealed and I will see the next 12 years. If it doesn't change, uh, if it doesn't become more or less. But the Father's desire for you as a, as a son in this generation is to know what you need to do because you've been commissioned, you've been anointed, you've been chosen to do phenomenal, great things. And they can no longer stop you from doing it. They can no longer tell you that you're not ready. Because I am ready, not because of what I know or what school I went to. I am ready because I'm in Christ. And in Christ, I have an infused knowledge, infused revelation. And I'm sure you've experienced this sometimes. You would just know something. You'll be sharing something with somebody. And all of a sudden, you're talking about stuff you didn't even know you knew. Because that's infused knowledge. That what happened when you spend intimate time with Yeshua. When you spend intimate time with the Father. He pours into you infused knowledge because your spirit knows all things. And when my spirit overshadows my soul and my body, there's a dimension of revelation that comes to me that literally blesses those around me, that opens up doorways for insight, uh, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, counsel, might for those around me so that they can know at greater levels and go deeper into the things the Father has. To this generation, and I'm going to close with this, this generation will know things that previous generations didn't know. Amen. And we say, well, they knew everything. You know, no, they do not. They only knew what they were taught. Now I say they, I love them, I honor them, I praise God for them. They gave us the step up to the next phase. But if they're going to stay where they are, then we cannot stick to what they have. We have to move out of that kingdom, out of that sphere of rule, out of that place, and begin to walk to where the Father is today. Because what I did yesterday, I cannot do today. You guys understand that? Yeah. What... I look at my, my, we have an iPhone 4 at home, but no one uses it. Matter of fact, it's so outdated. No, actually, wait, let's go back further than that. I have an iPad 1. Do you guys remember the iPad 1? This one doesn't even have a camera, front or back. It uh, has a, o, a, a, a iOS 5 on it. I can't download anything on it. It's still brand new. It still works perfectly, but I cannot even compare it to the iPhone 6, of the iPad 6, which is not even the newest one. The technology has changed over the last five years so intensely, so rapidly, that I can't compare the first to what we have now. 
But we in the church era still want to hold on to everything that was taught to us in the beginning. You know, when I go to grade one, they teach me things like one plus one is two. Two plus two is four. One plus two is three. And that sounds, in the beginning, it's so difficult. And I look at my sons and how they struggle with their, their sums and, and how they just grow. Then they do the multiplication. Then they do uh, the multiplication plus the minus and plus the plus. And so it changes. As they go to the next level, the math get more difficult, more difficult, until they start doing um, science that has math in it. And so they start doing algebra and, and all these scientific uh, mathematics that needs to take place to work out all these different theories. It's still math. It comes from one plus one, but it's a higher truth. It, it doesn't mean that one plus one is not a truth anymore. It's just that algebra is a higher truth of this one plus one. Does that make sense to you guys? So what we have today is a higher truth. Now we can reject it because it doesn't sound right. Because it doesn't sound possible. Because we were told, well, you're limited by your flesh. And we therefore hate our flesh. But the idea is that I honor my flesh and love my flesh. Because my flesh is to be glorified. It's the Father's desire. If Yeshua is my example, then He, after the resurrection, after His death and resurrection, He was fully glorified. Restored as, as the fullness of Yahweh in the earth. And He's still my example. So if I die in Christ, uh, which we all obviously have, and I'm resurrected in my new life into Him, then the idea is, and the fact is, that I need to walk as a glorified son of Yahweh. Jesus in, in John 17 stands before the Father and says, Now glorify me like I glorified you. So maybe we are glorified according to the measure that we glorify Him. Hmm. <laughs> so, this generation will be a people that will literally walk deep and intimate with the Father. Lay your hands on Joshua and have him stand before <coughs> Eleazar the priest and before all the congregation and commission him in their sight you shall put some of your authority on him now i want to i want to take this back and say that yeshua's desire is for you to step into him to have him anoint you appoint you send you commission you and give you everything you need to go in and legislate the kingdom of heaven into the earth if I live in Him, move in Him, have my being in Him, I'm in the Father, in the Holy Spirit. That's the only way I could be because I can't only be in Jesus and not in the Father, not in, because they are one. They operate as one in the heavens, yet they are different entities. Just like I am different entities. I have a body, I have a spirit, and I have a soul. And the Father's desire for this generation is to understand the anointing that's upon us, the glory of the Father that's with us, and the desire He has for us to live out of the kingdom of heaven into the earth. Exciting, right? Okay, let's stand. Let's pray this into us. And then have a great evening. <clears throat> Father, we just want to glorify your name right now. Step into you. And I want you to start looking at your mind's eye. The eye of your soul. Because what happens in the eye of your soul is what your spirit's doing. So I want you to picture... Yourself stepping into Christ. I want you to picture yourself from being in Christ going into Holy Spirit. I want you to see yourself being in Christ and Holy Spirit stepping into the Father. I want, to see yourself, I want you to see yourself in the fullness of Yahweh. And I want you to just begin to breathe His breath. Let Him wash over you His breath. Allow the Father to take you in and let Him begin to teach you at new levels. Let Him begin to propel you into the kingdom. Let Him begin to bless you and open your heart. Let Him begin to show you who you are and the glory that comes upon you when you walk in Him, live in Him. When the kingdom of heaven becomes your reality, that you have dominion over the kingdom of earth and you've given full dominion and authority of the kingdom of God over to the Father. His desire for you is to walk with Him at a deep level. And this generation says yes. This generation goes into that place of intimacy with the Father. And Lord, I pray for everyone in this room to be propelled, to be blessed, to go deeper into you. I pray, Father, that you will ignite us and let us have favor in everything we do. Bless your people financially, mentally, emotionally, socially, and align us to go deeper into you. Father, I ask you right now that your name and all of this will be glorified. We love you, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. You're an awesome, majestic God. In the name of Yeshua. Amen.